Hi, I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for joining us today. Today, I am going to take you on the first steps that I'm taking on a brand new journey. I have got my hands on, finally, a Samsung Galaxy 4S and decided it's time for me to make the big switch. I've been an iOS guy for as long as I can remember, and it means that I really don't know as much about what's going on in the Android world as I would like, so I went out and got myself one of the flagship products of the Android world, the set Galaxy the Samsung Galaxy 4S, and I am now migrating my life over to it. And it's, for me, everything that I see and everything that I do in the Android space, I'm seeing through the lens of a, of a dyed-in-the-wool iOS guy, because I've had an iPhone for as long as I can remember. Uh, although I've played with other operating systems, demoed them occasionally, had demo units that I've played with, this is the first time that I've actually taken and committed to moving my life from iOS into Android. So it's a bit of it's a big journey of discovery for me. I'm excited about some things, I'm trepidant about some things, uh, but I think I've got a, I think I've got a good piece of hardware to kind of base my migration on. The Galaxy 4S is certainly well respected out there, and it's got a lot of features that I didn't have in the iPhone. So I have to embrace that and kind of move into that space. The one that I want to talk to you about today and show you today is one that I discovered as I started poking around. The, almost the first few hours that I had the phone, I'm poking around, I'm looking in the apps, and I found this very cool app called Watch On. And I was thinking, it looks like a TV remote control app. And indeed, I clicked on it, and it is a remote control app for my Samsung Galaxy 4S. Now, here's the cool thing about the 4S compared to the iPhone, or one of the cool things. A, the screen's bigger, which I appreciate increasingly with my current eyesight, but it also has an infrared emitter built into it, something that Apple has eschewed and it will never do. Apple doesn't consider infrared to be a cool technology of the future. So they basically shut themselves off from any of this kind of functionality. You can control things through Wi-Fi or through Bluetooth, but not through visual medium, not through IR. So uh, it's you know it's never been a, it's just been a non-starter for me. I've never thought about the fact that I could have my phone as my remote control for my TV till I got my Galaxy 4S, and then I went I can have my phone as my remote control for my TV. So let's install it and set it up. Now setting it up was pretty straightforward. Basically, you put in your postal code, which allows them to download and, and tell them who your carrier is, which then allows them to download uh, program information, which is really useful. It's not as robust as the really dedicated program managers, but it's, it gives you a good, I think, 24 hours of programming information. And then it says, what type of TV do you have? I've got a Panasonic TV. And then it says, okay, let's figure out what your code is. So instead of having a list and having to find my model number and all that stuff, which is a real pain in the rear end, instead it just says, try this button. Did it turn off? No. Or turn on? Try this one. Try this one. And then you go through this sequence. I don't know how many you actually have to go through. They have, if, if you go to the end, I actually went through, I think, 13 codes before it found the one that worked for me. But as soon as it found it, it turned the TV off. I said, use this code. This one works. And they said, great. So then it knows now how to turn up and down my volume, turn my TV on and off, get into the device control, that kind of thing. So step one accomplished very painlessly. And I hadn't even moved my tuchus from the couch at this point. Next step, setting up your set-top box. And, you know, I thought there was only a few models of set-top boxes out there, but no, there's like a bazillion set-top boxes. So I was scrolling through the list, realized it would take me forever to get down to the M's for Motorola. So I typed in the, I typed in the word Motorola, and it, then it, it said, okay, test the set-top box, make sure that the channel goes up and down. It did indeed, and that was it. My, my Galaxy 4S was suddenly my remote. Now, it isn't as full featured as, say, the Harmony remotes that I've played with in the past um, or the dedicated apps that you can get that control your PVR that you can get from, the, uh, from, your, from your cable carrier, from your, from your television provider. Uh, but those are much more tightly integrated with their system. But as a universal tool that works, that you can set up for any TV in any environment, for any PVR and other types of uh, audiovisual gear as well, it is certainly robust, easy to set up, and oh, so convenient because you've always got your phone with you. So you can always turn the TV on or off or up or down as far as the volume. You can always select a different station and record a show. You've got the basic function all there as well as basic directory listings all in all. I think that's a pretty darn good first step for me and my Samsung Galaxy 4S, don't you? 
I hope you found this video today to be useful. If you have, please give us a like and hey, subscribe to our videos here on YouTube. Uh, every week we produce new how-to videos that of things that I think you are going to find interesting and useful. And if you do have, find them interesting and useful, drop me a note and let me know. And if you think of something that I'm not covering that might be interesting and useful, drop me a note and let me know that too. You can visit my website at dottotech.com and contact us there. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.